up, dog? It's good. Are we starting? Are we live now? Oh, no. shit. So I shouldn't have this no, in. That's kind of I didn't even have it in. It's for the, it's for the aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, though, man? What's good? Yeah, yeah, bro. Bless it, man. Yeah. Come on. What's yeah, up yeah. with you, though? Chilling, you know. What got you out here in L.A.? We dapping everybody, right? Okay. Uh, change the scenery, work on music. Oh, okay, bet. You know, it's cold as fuck in New York right now, so. Crazy. Yeah, I don't really fuck with the cold like that. Well, you've so. been out there for ever. Well, yeah, I mean, I've been on the East Coast a long time, so. It's just like, everyone was just telling me to come out to LA, and it's just like, it's a high concentration of people that I would like to work with that I have relationships, and people that I don't have relationships, but like, you know, maybe we mutually like are friends of each other, so. It's just a easier place to get that done, I feel, than New York. Yeah. For me. That's, a, that's like the big debate I always have with my boys is like, where's a better place to be a creative, New York or L.A.? What are you trying to do with your creativity? Uh-huh. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, that's, yeah. that, uh, I guess that makes sense. As an artist, though, like a musician, uh, let's say hip-hop. What type of musician? Let's say hip-hop, a rapper, particularly. Are you a rapper looking to make money, or are you a rapper looking just to rap because you love rapping? I would think, let's go with the former. Make money. Where are you going? Um, LA. Yeah? Yeah. It's just more people. More people that... All right, so here's what happened. Is that... It used to be New York. New York used to be a really tight place for, like, any artist to go and, uh, you know, be an artist and be a creative. What has happened is New York has gotten really expensive. It's mm. like ridiculously expensive. Yeah. So what happens is um, most of the people that are in New York, you have like the you know native New York people, but that's even g- gets fucked up because of like gentrification. And then the people that visit is typically not, it's be- usually people that can't live there unless like maybe like their like parents are like paying for them to live there or yeah. something like that. So the thing is, People can still come to LA, kind of with nothing, and make it or like or like get by because the cost of living isn't as bad yeah. as New York, and there's a higher concentration of like the studio culture is real big, and the, the land is less, cost less. Mm-hmm. So like everyone has like a studio out here. So like the amount of space that it costs to have a studio, the amount of space. Mm-hmm that you get for the money is greater out here. Right, 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 yeah. That and the weather's sense. better, right? So maybe it's just in a better mood, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm, <laughs> right here. And I feel like it's a little more collaborative than New York at the moment. New York is like a very competitive place. So, so does Atlanta not get any love in this? No, that's why Atlanta's really lit, too, because they're, like, also collaborative. Yeah, I, I just had this conversation. Any place that's collaborative is, is, a, is a good place to make music. To make it, yeah. No one to become successful, I think. I feel of. like... The but you have the internet, so you could, you could be successful from anywhere. Yeah, but w- I feel like Atlanta is, like, a good place for people from Atlanta. That's just how... Just people from Atlanta? Well, I mean, you could go there if you're not from Atlanta, but... Well, yeah, because Atlanta's who make like a family... It, like I feel like if you're in Atlanta, you know everybody in Atlanta. But coming as an outsider, unless you know somebody in Atlanta, it's kind of hard to break into Atlanta. And it's like its own subculture. Yeah, that's true. Like Atlanta's got its own vibe, and the people in Atlanta live that life. I feel like, and that's true. I don't think the rest of the country does. Does that make sense? I feel what you're saying. Yeah. I've only been I've been in Atlanta a couple times. The other times were to play like festivals, play the ETC, and then. Recently, I went for like a day, but it was so lit, and I got a lot of love. But the person I went with knows a lot of people. In right, yeah. So, but people definitely seem more like receptive to just like exchange numbers, for example. Like, mm. that's the thing. Like, you know, like you're in New York, or even like, this is what I got gathered. Like, if you're in New York, or even in LA, it's like motherfuckers are like, oh, what's your Instagram? Yeah, that's the and thing. They, they gauge your Instagram depending on how many followers you have. It depends how nice they are to you. And seeing when I was in Atlanta, seeing people are more keen to just be like, oh, like, what's your number? Like, 
uh, even like famous niggas. Yeah. So. I don't know if that's a southern thing too, because that's how it is in Texas. It's like, or at least that's if you ask for somebody Instagram off top, it's like, I don't know, it's like a box. I feel like you putting the whole the whole thing in. Cause the number is like a person to person thing. I think there's like two reasons. Some people they just do it because like, besides just like clout t- chasing type shit, some people just do it because they they're looking to have like see what you're doing, what you're about. It's like a business card kind of. For sure. And like. It allows them to like, oh, like, oh, this person looks like this. I don't but know, Instagram bro. Like, is what you just, make it. Like, you just take. Usually, what I do is like, if especially if I'm like fucked up, like if I'm drunk, and I meet someone, I get their number. I like would take a selfie right there, and I send it to them. Word. <laughs> and like, oh yeah, like this is yeah. I got yeah. It, but, yeah. I got like a whole iPhone contact, so it's like when I meet somebody, I'm just like, yo, just give me a number, and I send them my full contact. Like, yeah, you put all that shit. Yeah, picture, name, phone number, yeah, you email. You sound like the contact card. Or shit. Yeah, the contact card itself. Yeah, that's like some like that's that organized shit. Yeah, my <laughs> yeah. right in the little company line, you get the at Benny Hundreds. Like, right. cool. If you want to follow me, there it is. But it's like, here's yeah, my yeah, number. All that shit. Yeah. Yeah. No sense, yeah. Like, contact me. Not for that. Stop. Yeah, bro. Oh uh, yeah. So how you like LA? It's cool, bro. Yeah. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's it's um. The collaborative shit is what I like the most. I yeah. feel like it's just a culture of creativity out here. Right. Like, I don't know how it is uh, in the Northeast, but, like, especially in Texas, it's, like, it's weird. If you try to, if you're a creative and, like, you're doing anything but that, people don't give you a credit as a creative, if that makes sense. So, right. Like, you're a creative, but you have a regular job. So, like, nah, fuck you, nigga. Basically, it's yeah. like, you know, whereas here it's understood, like, yo, you got to make money somehow, and you're not going to make it off your creativity off, off the rip, at least. So... Go get your bag however you need to, and then use that to invest in what you're doing. You know, right. yeah. that culture exists here. I feel like I feel like that's it's just better. That's like the main thing in the weather. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. <laughs> what, what's up? I'm funny. Yeah, yeah bro, funny. you funny as hell, bro. <laughs> really? Without doing much. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't even tell no jokes. I know. I just be chilling. <laughs> so much, you die. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, a good way though. It's like, do wrong. You ever heard of that? You ever yeah. heard of that? Nah, me neither. I just made it up. <laughs> so you just talking shit about me? Nah, not shit. Just like bro talk. Like bro shit talk. Yeah. Just disrespect. Nah, not disrespect. Nah, nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But I think like coming out to LA, I think what you said is the biggest thing. Cause I've experienced both. I moved out to Northeast, right? I lived in Jersey, work in Times Square. Oh yeah, I lived in Jersey too. Where I grew up like in Jersey, basically. What part? Jersey, in Montclair. Okay, I was in like you know Orange, South Orange is. Yeah, yeah, that's where like I was. West at. Orange, Montclair. Like yeah, yeah, it's that's, all in the same that's area. Kind of like where I was. At. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I was staying out there with like um, a bunch of like basically family to me, a close family friends, like all my like Jamaican family. Okay, for sure. Yeah, and um, it's different like that. I guess that base helped me with survival, right? Because it's not like I had to pay that much to be out there, but just life, bro. It's not like I feel like out here, maybe it's because it's 2018, about to be 2019. You get so many different ways to make money now. If you got a car, you got money, essentially, nowadays. Yeah, you can Uber, right? You can Uber, you can Lyft, you could deliver groceries, food. It doesn't matter. Like, you turn that into money, so that makes life easier. But in New York, you can't even do that because you right. can't. You're not driving around in, in New York City. Fuck out of here. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, bro, so. I don't know. I think it's uh, you really got to be on your shit. You got to, I feel like it's like a corporate, you got to have like a corporate play and then try to do what you're doing on the side. And my, that's just how I see it, though. Well, but you come from that. From yeah. the com- from the corporate background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. Like, yeah. that's what I was doing before I came here. Yeah. You know? So you say you're a stock, stock broker? Yeah, investment advisor, stock broker, yeah. Oh, so you should so, get the bands. You should all get the money. I mean, I wasn't getting too many bands. I got enough to pay off some debt, stack up, and move to L.A., so right. that's a blessing. But yeah. I feel like the knowledge, knowing how to actually, knowing how money works, that was, like, the biggest thing out of it. Like, getting my licenses, right. you have to know how the whole financial system works to pass your Series 7 and 65 right. and shit. So. so it just gave you, like, it allowed you just to, like, function and understand things like on a fundamental level. Right. That lots of people just don't. Because it's not a necessity for them. But everyone should, probably. Everybody should. Yeah. If you understood truly how money worked, like, it would probably piss you off first. Yeah. But then you would just realize that you're better off not spending. Just invest your money. Right. Just put it in the shit. Yeah. 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 
So what you talking about, like the Federal Reserve type shit? You know, it's like, oh like, boy! Oh like, yeah. Why don't we get, make this educational? Uh, tell, tell the listeners something. You want you want to teach the listeners something? You teach them. Um, I mean Federal Reserve, all that. You you can talk about all that. They, well, what, what would piss someone off about money? That um. I guess what would piss somebody off would be to know that if you would have, when the first iPhone came out, if you would have invested the $600 in Apple rather than buying an iPhone, then that meaningless piece of junk would be thousands of dollars for you. Conceptually, yeah. like that's, people don't think like that. So you think, so rich people invest, everyone else just spends. Yes, and wait, what you're doing when you spend is you put your money in the stores that those rich people already invested in. Right. So people think like this idea of like the rich getting richer and like, oh, it's a scam and blah, blah, blah. It's like, nah, they just put their money into the system exactly. that you feed with your spending. Right. So it's like, cause you know, all these big ass companies are not owned by individuals they are owned by thousands or millions of shareholders. Right. So. Which generates like the product that people are spending their money on. Yeah, like Apple is the biggest company in the world right now. It's worth over a trillion dollars. Well, the market's been crashing lately, but right. it was over a trillion for a while. Right. And people wonder, how is it worth a trillion? Well, that share price is skyrocketing because people are putting their money in Apple. Like, right. how would I explain this? Like, you know when the economy crash, when the next crash that happens? That's when you need to put all your money in the market. Right. Like, right now is probably when you should be taking your money out of the market. Right, because... There's imminent doom that's coming. Everything right. works in cycles. And it gets more volatile. Right? Yeah, and right now you see it the last month or two, you see the volatility, right? It's crazy. Well, I don't right. know if you pay attention, but right. if you do, it's crazy these last couple months. Right. So, it's bound to... So, recessions and shit like that, that's good for rich niggas. Recessions are good for everybody, yeah. but it's really good for rich niggas because yeah. they pay attention. Exactly. But recessions are low-key. They're good... Let me tell you what happens. What really happens is smart people, or I mean, I say from smart people, but investors, rich people, when the market is going down, they're investing. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Because it's going to go up. Because it's going to go up, and it's going to go up higher than where it is now. Right. So, yeah. Other people are doing, let me see, just say other. Other people are doing the opposite. Yeah, they're getting scared. Or they see the market going up, and they're like, I want my piece. So yeah. they're jumping in, but they're jumping in way too late. Yeah, then they pull out when it's going down. Exactly. So all they've done is lose money. Yep. Right. Exactly. Right. So it's like a fundamental thing that I tell people is bulls get, uh, let's see, bulls get fed, bears get fed, pigs get slaughtered. Right. Right. So if you believe in the market and if you're uh, to be bullish is to believe that it's going to go up. Right. So you can invest in ways that if just, it goes up. Or just to up, know it's going to go up. It's sure. inevitable. You're gonna yeah. Go yeah. Up. But I mean, there's also times when it's inevitable it's going to go down, like right, right. now. So if you on that side of things you're a bear right. and you can bet against the market and make money like you can short sell like selling stocks at a higher price and then buying them later right. at a lower price and doing the exchange there's all sorts of shit right. so a bull somebody who's going this way can get money and a bear somebody who believes it's going down can also make money but a pig a person who's being greedy they just get slaughtered right. so if you are up here and you like bitcoin right. I, I cannot stand that shit I don't I, oh you don't like cryptocurrency no, 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 Bitcoin in particular. Like, crypto, all right, so, like, this is so random and off. We're going to get back to, like, you, but... Um, yeah, but this is good. Yeah, so yeah, fun. yeah. so cryptocurrency, it's it's deregulated, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, just look what happened in the last year. You get, because it's deregulated, anybody with a, a mass amount of money can manipulate that whole system. Mm -hmm. And people don't get that. Right. So when it got pumped up and everybody right. was just thinking, oh, this is great, this is great. Like, no, somebody's going to pull the rug out from under it. Yeah, so it's deliberate. Absolutely, yeah. it's deliberate. And it's legal. Or it's not illegal. Because right. the framework isn't there yet. And people panic. People panic. Well, no, the, what, the, what's worse is people got, <laughs> people mortgage, set up double yeah, mortgages. Like mortgage, oh, that's everything yeah, yeah, yeah. to buy Bitcoin. Yeah, then when it goes down, they panic. They panic, and yeah. fuck that whole shit up even worse. Yeah, or they don't panic, but they're still screwed. If you bought Bitcoin at $18,000, even if you only bought a fraction of a share, you're screwed. It's, about, it's over with. Yeah. It's only, what, 6000 now? Yeah. yeah. So you either going to have to That's going to go back up, though, man. See, that's hard to say, because at least with Apple, you know that they're selling something. Apple selling iPhones, selling computers, like everything that's in the publicly traded market is some sort of 
profit driven company whether they make profit or not is a different story but they're they are some sort of entity that has a tangible product or service cryptocurrency is none of that cryptocurrency is to me is the equivalent of penny stocks it's just it's like been, it's being integrated into society right there like atms or like doing that people are allowing you to pay them via bitcoin certain cryptocurrency so it's not really going anywhere yeah sure but i'm talking about the value of it is unpredictable yeah but it's gonna go up it may go up I feel like it's going to find a baseline for it to be a currency. You think it's going to flatline at some point? It has to. I mean, the yeah. dollar relative to other things, there's a relative relationship with currency. Yeah, yeah. So there's, it's. I feel like 6,000, maybe oh, 7,500. So you, you, you think it's flatlined at that? Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it's finding an equilibrium. Like, this is where it stabilized before it took off. Then yeah. it's come back down. And even for the past, what, five months? Like, it's yeah. been rocking right around here. So it's found a stable value. Cool. Well, now it can be exchanged at that patterns, value. It, huh? If you look at patterns, the time between the fluctuation gets greater and greater. Right, which would yeah. mean it's stabilizing, no? It's stabilizing for a greater amount of time, but like, so when it goes up again, it's gonna be more volatile. It's gonna be like really volatile. And then when it goes down, it's gonna be really bad. Yeah, so, so I'd rather just- I mean, if you were, basically, I, I think if you're really, really rich and you put your money in it and just leave it there, and never worry about it and mm. it's not you're not seeing it as a source of income per se but more like just a fund to like have access to like later and like you know when it reaches a number that you're like comfortable with but I definitely yeah I mean I definitely wouldn't view it as something to like make it later enough. yeah I would honestly see it as like a bet that you're placing and if you have yeah, to be you willing gotta be to comfortable, lose that money you have to be comfortable losing all the money yeah all of it yeah all of it because there's bad. nothing to say. My bad. No, it's cool. I'm, I was just saying, I'm not going to even lie. Like, I was like, oh, Bitcoins. All right, let me try this, right? I put $50 in it, right? Yeah. I know that ain't shit. But I was like, let me let me play this. Let me see where it goes <laughs> up and down. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. I see it going down to 47 yeah. 40 But that's okay, whatever. though. I know, but it's only $50. That's not much. But people put thousands, and, I don't know, hundreds people of thousands. their homes. Nah, they tripping off of that. Yeah. That? Well, that's because they, that's an investment they can't lose. You know what I'm that's saying? a stupid that's, that's investment. What you mean? Wise. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that's not a wise decision. You just <laughs> not at all. Like going <laughs> to real estate or something. I mean, but you don't put your home up for, like really to go into so like I don't know. Homes. That's just there's so many other things you could do with that money than just throw it in Bitcoin. Like people are just so bought into the hype. And there's well, that's what people are betting on the rich people are betting on the dummies that do that. Exactly. Yeah. And there's yeah. nothing to say that there's not going to be some sweeping government involvement that shuts the whole thing down right and that's what i'm trying to say you really right. don't know whereas the fine the equities market or the bond market is there to stay right yeah people just want to that instant gratification cash out high price point real quick yeah but with like a, bonds and stuff it's like, a that's marathon though, slow. So. You, you know what's crazy though mm -hmm. if like the one fact that like if you were to ask like what's the craziest fact i learned is that people think about the stock market or, which is the equities market like you own equity in something but the bond market is four times as big as the stock market the whole country is propped up on bonds so can you explain that a little bit all to right listeners so like <laughs> sure so a bond it's no it's cool so a bond basically turns the way i like to tell people is a bond turns people into banks right so if you put if you buy a bond you're literally if you turned yourself into a bank you're loaning out the money. Uh, you get, it at interest, you get interest, interest and then you get your principal back at the end of the bond term. So like long-term bonds are 30 years. You can get all the way down to like securities or, or I mean um, treasury notes, which could be a year. And then you have like uh, smaller things that are, um, you know, less than a year. But the point is, is like, let's say you get a 30-year uh, treasury bond at like 5%. You put 100,000 in it. So mm -hmm. you buy, uh, if par is probably 1,000, so you buy 1,000 shares or it's 10,000, so you buy 100 shares, whatever it is. Um, you, uh, well, that was based on a million. But let's say it's 100,000, right? 5% return means you get $5,000 every year. Mm. They, re they give you a return semi-annually. So every six months, you get $2,500. That's guaranteed money. Guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah. You just gotta so wait long as the though. bond doesn't fail. Yeah, what happens if shit fucks up? Man, what you had in 07, 08 is what happens when shit fucks up. Right. The market, well, because everything you look around you is propped up by bonds. Right. Right. The city is made by bonds. The buildings are made by bonds. The roads are made by bonds. People think like companies build this. No, they they get with the city or they get with the government and they say, hey, we want to do this, but we're not going to pay for it all ourselves. So this bond, they create this Use bond. Other people's money. Yeah. Other people's money. It's all OPM. That's what, that's what, that's what a bond is. Yeah. 
So it's like instead of going to a bank, people are the bank. Sure. I want to build Cowboy Stadium. I'm mm-hmm. Jerry Jones. Mm-hmm. I'll put up a million if the city puts up a million. Mm-hmm. All right, well, city turns to the, all their constituents and they say, hey, I'm going to put up a billion-dollar municipal bond at $10,000 or $1,000 par, which is like per share, essentially. Mm-hmm. You buy as many up. They tell you what the percentage is. Down the line, you get your percentage. So let's say you buy 100000 worth, 5%. You get $5,000 a year for 30 years, right? And at the end, you get your 100000 back. Right. Because you're the bank. So it's just some residual that. income. Some residual income. Yeah. That's what rich people do. Yeah. Like, Make the, money where they're sleeping, basically. Yeah, like a super rich who are conservative. If you're cons- Like, when I worked at Fidelity, like, our model was all based off of, like, strategy and, and it's... It's all more on the conservative side. It was like safe stuff. Like we right. didn't believe in like doing super risky things. High risk, so. Yeah, you know. So if you're younger, you can take all the risk in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, we still believe in uh, we. I used when I worked there, uh, believed in you know. I still do, I guess. Um, yeah, diversification. Yeah, <laughs> diversification, spreading your money out, and all that shit. But the older you get, the less you should be risking. That's just a fundamental thing. And that's why I say, when I say pigs get slaughtered, you don't know how many times I pick up the phone, because I worked at a center, right? I pick up a phone or it's in my ear and I click, hello, or welcome to Fidelity. And it's some older person who's like, yo, I'm trying to get in the market. I'm like, dude, you're like 70 years old. Chill your ass out. Yeah, chill out, bro. It's over for you. Like, yeah. you're not the person who needs to be investing in, and not at least in stocks. Go invest in some bonds. Government bonds that you know won't fail. Yeah, Yeah, you know? But they're like, oh, I'm like, how old are you? 70. How much money you got to your name? 40,000. Oh, you're done. I'm sorry. This game's over for you. We got family. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't where you need to be. Gotta focus on retirement at that point. Sure, maintain and live your life. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Find a way, but this ain't the way. You feel me? And that's the problem is nobody, like, everybody sees it all as, like, what they see on TV and movies. Right. That's not the, that's not the wave. Like, this is, it's a long-term game. It's for us, really. The equities market, like investing, in my opinion, is for young people to, because you can weather the storm. Like if you got invested 10 years ago, even if you, if you invested 10 years ago, first of all, your money is crazy right now, right? Because all it done, all it's done is go up. But even if it crashes, you can, you can make it through it. You can make it through it because you're young, you know, God forbid you die. But if, yeah, as long but as you, you can survive that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's going to recover. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's your... Tough. There's your market knowledge for the day. There you go. Yeah. I learned something. Yeah. If you was not informative, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. I appreciate it. That's good. It, I could do that all day, though. I try not to, to get in that bag because I can sit here and talk about money all day. Well, I mean, when people watch something, I think it's good for them to learn something. Where? In one way or another. I think we did it in a pretty cool way. Sure. Yeah. Right? yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So back to you, though. That's <laughs> what we're here to learn about you, man. I told y'all niggas yeah. before the shit, I'm gonna be asking mad questions. <laughs> no, y'all thought it was a I game. I was like, wait, we should hold off for the podcast because I had so many questions. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, now we can get back to that though. But yeah, yeah, tell us about you. Where are you from? Like, where do you want to know? Where yeah. do you? How do you define from? Like, where, where were you born? Because you say you spent you time. At? You spent a lot of time in the north. You said, were you born out there? I was born in New York. Where? Um, and then I moved to New Jersey. And then uh, I moved to Addis. Dope. How long were you there for? I was there for like a solid like four years, but like I always went every summer like before that. And then, I mean, I still go now. Like, still have a place there. So, yeah. But I mean, I was there for like a solid like four years. And then um, the adolescence, childhood. When was you out there? Yeah, like middle school. Oh, where, where? Like, I don't know, that type of shit. Yeah. Then, uh, then I got uh, kicked out of school. So then I went to school in uh, New York. Went to a military school in upstate New York. Where? Yeah. And then I went you just going to skip past the fact that you're getting kicked out of yeah. school? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was like, where uh, are you getting kicked so out So you got kicked out of school and then you got to leave the whole entire country you got kicked out of school in Addis <laughs> you got to come back to America I get, I, normally you that's get usually kicked backwards. out in America yeah exactly uh, you get sent to Addis <laughs> what yeah, happened there? I mean, you don't got to go into details about what yes, happened but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I mean, a little curious so you got kicked um, out of the country no, too I was just like I had like I had like a bad temper um, I was like real violent mm. and so I was like yeah super violent super just anger issues um, 
And then that also kind of manifested in, like, school as well because I was, like, really smart. Like, so I would do well on tests and stuff. But, like, the niggas, like, once you do homework and shit, I'm like, why the fuck y'all? That's mm-hmm. for niggas who don't understand this shit. Like, for sure. Right. Why y'all got me doing homework? Like, fuck out of here. Like, I'm getting 100 on the test. Why am I doing homework? Yeah. But that's, like, a big part of, like, your grades. So, like, I only actually... Like kind of even survived, only just because I did well on tests. <laughs> you speak in my life, bro. So I made you know? Yeah, I'm just like, what the fuck is this? And then I'll I'll tell I'll tell the teacher straight up like, yo, this shit is stupid. You know what I'm saying? So then that couple with like, you know, the attitude, they were just like, nigga, like, I mean, I was fighting all the time. So like, that coupled with like the violence, <laughs> it, was, it was just like, nigga, you gotta get out of here. So, and that was back home. Yeah. Oh, where? What yeah. took you there in the first place? Your family just wanted to. No, my mom was uh, with the UN, so I, she made she made the move. So you went with. I rolled with her and shit. You know. That's what's up. You miss it at all? Well, you go back often. You say. Yeah, like. I mean, I, I don't really miss it. Period. <laughs> 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 what's that about? You know, you go up traveling, you learn not to be attached to things. Yeah, I think that. So, yeah. I just don't really be missing shit. I'm just like, ah, it's cool. Right. I would like to go. I mean, if I if I really miss something that much, then I have the power to not miss it anymore by just being there. Mm-hmm. But, so, obviously, nigga, don't miss it that bad. Right? <laughs> right. But I love, I love home. I love, I love Abby's and shit like that. Yeah. So, that way you learn to walk with lions and shit? <laughs> nah, it's just DNA shit. Oh, yeah? I'm saying? It's just like in the blood. You feel me? Like, you're just born with the sauce. You know what I'm saying? Is it the sauce or they were just like, ah, one did it. And they just like walk with you because you wanted them? Yeah, it's the sauce, man. Oh, uh, okay. Gotta have the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got to. Some, some lions, because you know, some lions, you can be a lion, but that don't mean you respect it. You feel me? By the other lions. Yeah, they might fuck you up. So yeah. you gotta have the sauce. Lions are default. Of yeah. course. We all lying, but then you gotta have the sauce to walk with it. To walk with them. You know, I'm the most respected. Where? where, where? So. You say you're the most respected? Of course. Like, I'm, I'm most respected what? Amongst what? I'm just the most respected. In general? I feel you. Niggas got respect for you. Because I give the most respect. Uh, yeah, I dig that. It's reciprocated. And there you go. That's all, that's all you gotta do. So you're the most respected? I can't be the most if you the most. Which one is it, homie? Nah, you could be the most. Too. All right, which, I'm very well respected, I like to say. You're, you're the most respected. I'm the most respected, bet. You're number one. Numero uno. You're number one. I appreciate that. I'm number one. I'll break it down like this. All right. Remember in gym class? Uh-huh. They say everyone count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everyone counts up. Yeah. Say all the ones go together. All the twos go together. Uh-huh. All the threes go together. Mm-hmm. I'm just one of the number ones. Word. And I just roll with other number ones. One hundred. We could all be number one. Yeah. It's like getting an A. Everyone could get an A. Just most niggas don't be getting an A. Yeah. True. There you go. <laughs> I fucks with it. Yeah. I'm rolling with the number ones too. There you go. My new uh new bio. Winners. Winners. That's for sure. I ain't with the losers. Fuck sure. all that. See. So how are you out here? Cause I didn't even know you was out here till what like last week. Yeah, I've been. I was in the cut. I was just working. Um, I'm, I haven't been here for like seven years, but I mean, I'm here now, so. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to being here more often. You working on like a comprehensive little project? I, I was going through all your music. There's a lot of singles, like separate things you've dropped, but the yeah. the, the artwork kind of looks yeah, yeah, yeah. similar. So. Yeah, yeah. so I have a project now that I'm putting out called Vices. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a more darker project and it's kind of just about like my vices and uh, how that manifested and like some of the consequences or just what happens as a result of those vices and it's just in a collective project called Vices that I'm putting out and then um, you know I have a lot of other projects coming up Word. you know what I mean so I'm at with it. That's what's up, bro. Your uh, your folks, how they how they get down with this? Cause you've been, 
I've met you years ago. I've been rapping for like yeah. I would. I guess now your folks. I would presume your folks are used to it. But at the time when you started, what was that like? You know, they just just rap shit. You know, they like. All right, this is cute, but like, when are you gonna get like a job? Mm. Do you still get that? No. Oh, okay. In the most respect, so no. <laughs> Do they actually support you though, or are they just cool with it? Yeah, they're very supportive. Dope. Yeah. What about when they seen you hanging on hooks? <laughs> I know that. That's yeah. No, I was that, like, my, that made my sh- like my flesh crawl. I was like, what? So those were real hooks too, though. You said. Yeah. How did yeah. you do that? Yeah, of course. How? You want to try? No. I mean, you got to tell me first how you did it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm signing up for. Goes through your, they just put the hooks through your skin. You actually put it through your skin? Yeah. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. For real? You actually put it through your skin? I believe it. Just yeah, cause y'all, I, didn't, y'all didn't know that? Y'all thought it was like special effects or something? Well, I thought that at first, and then I read that you said, no, this is like real hooks. And I was like, okay, well, there has to be a way. Like, you didn't actually put that through your skin, did you? Yeah. It's too much skin. Okay, but you wasn't hanging from the ceiling. With that in your skin, yes, like that would pull your skin off. Like I don't, I don't how know. you'd be surprised how strong your skin is. Yeah, like you can hold a baby. Like that should be stretching <laughs> OD. So you definitely can hold your back. Okay, that's a whole nother level of respect for you then. That, that's dedication to the craft, the art. That's insane. This is crazy. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, having a baby is definitely way more, more respect to that than me hanging from some hooks. But I appreciate yes, it. But <laughs> that's crazy. Respect to the mothers. There you that's, go. Shout out to moms. That's <laughs> that's more painful, more work, and it's for nine months. Yeah, that's true. Nigga, I should ain't nine months. But <laughs> 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 uh, no, you did like that. I just do that. I just do that for perspective, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it right. is intense, but I mean, you know, anyone could do it. Pain-wise, this is up there, though. I would presume, at least at the beginning, no? Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, you it's do more that. like shock. It's like what the fuck. I'm hanging from hooks. Yeah, bro. It's How crazy. long were you hanging from hooks? So for the video, so I did it for the video, then I did it live at the show. So oh for, wow, you did that live. Yeah, I seen that live. Yeah, That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is that even safe? Yeah, I don't do anything. It's really. That's just it. people always be like scared for me, but I'm like, yo, I care about my life more than y'all. Like, so I'm I'm gonna do crazy shit, but I'm also gonna like. Make sure it's, I'm doing it the safest way possible. So it's, there's always a risk, but it's not. It's not like I just put I put the shit in myself, like you know. Right. Like, so you got like professional. <laughs> <shots. laughs> <laughs> Let's figure this out. Yeah, yeah, like, did you go to a doctor shit. or something? Like I'm trying to. I'm no, just trying to understand. People, <laughs> there's people that do like oh, do, this do shit. That? Yeah, okay. yeah. I might even do it while I'm out here, just cause, just you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's just. So you asking me how long? Yeah. So the first, so for the video, I felt like I was hanging for like 20 minutes, but I was hanging more for, um, how long would you guess? In a video? I mean, yeah. you got to record a whole ass video. There's a bunch of cuts. I would think you'd be doing it for a while. I think at least an hour. Yeah. I, I was hanging for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's wild. That is. But then for the show, I didn't hang for that long because it was a live show. So we did the, that show was so epic. It was like the l- most endless hip hop show ever in the I history. I can't believe it. When do you ever hear people just hanging from hooks? Yeah, so <laughs> I've seen that video. I'm like, yo. And, and for the for, the, for the show, yeah. for the show, I only did so for the video. I did ten hooks. Yeah. So the weight is distributed a little more, but for the show I did two hooks, and that show was different. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. When I say the video, I mean the video of the show. Okay, when I saw yeah, the show, yeah, I'm like, yeah. yo, he's literally just latched on, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the crowd reaction like, though? Oh, she was crazy. It was the lit, most lit show ever, literally. Yeah, ever. yeah. That's why you're the history, most respected. Right? Most respected, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> I can't, bro. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. <laughs> Shit. You ain't hanging me on no hooks, man. So you got my respect for sure. I mean, you had my respect before, but. So are you respect me more because of hooks? No, I just. I can't respect you more than most. Like, you already the most respected. Can't, you can't add on to that. Right. Yeah, so you already got the, you know, top level of respect, but that's just crazy. Because you give the most respect. That's why you're the most respected. 
Double the active. What do we do? Double that. Gang activity. Feel me? Gang activity. <laughs> Feel me? Absolutely. How you doing? I'm great. Yeah, how was your day? My day was wonderful. How was, did you go out last night? Last night? No. Yeah. No. It was just some family stuff. <laughs> so you're from North Hollywood? Mm-hmm. So how's it, is it, is it like gentrified now? Oh yeah, it's so different from when I grew up. How do you feel about it? I mean, it is what it is. It's everywhere now. Right. Yeah, everywhere's being gentrified. But yeah. I mean. Just roll the punches. Yeah, so. exactly. It's interesting though. You see um, artists and creatives from all over. At this point, it's just like, so what do you do? Because you just already assume somebody's already a creative out here. Right. Like, it's cool. It's a cool vibe. It's just not what I grew up with. Right. It's like, and no ho, like, where did that come from? Like, it wasn't no ho, like, 10 years ago. So right. Like Hollywood. Right. It's cool. I mean, it's cool. I have no issues with it. Being, like, a creative person, I mean, it just, it all kind of came to me. So, like, everywhere I go, it's just like, oh, okay, cool. You got a studio right here? That's dope. I mean, you work there? Dope. It's, like, all in my little hood. Right. Can't be mad at that. So it's real convenient for you it's as convenient. a creative. It's convenient, yeah. It's just not what I grew up with, but I can't be mad at that. I mean, shit changes. Right. Just adjust a bit. So you just... It's cool. I mean, yeah. It's not bad. The only issue I got is with, like, rent. Right. It's crazy. Like, my dad, he lives in the same apartment he's lived in since, like, before I was born. Mm-hmm. He still pays, like, about under, like, a 1000 for a two-bedroom. Oh, so it's, like, rent control. In the heart of... Yeah. Well, yeah. In the heart of NoHo, uh-huh. but trying to get that same unit in that building, someone else is paying over two grand, mm. like twenty five hundred for a two bedroom. I'm just like shit. <laughs> like that's, that's insane. Crazy. Yeah, it's insane. That's the only issue I really got with NoHo. Just prices. Everybody trying to get a spot in there. It's expensive as hell. But that's everywhere though. Right. So. Uh. And I mean everywhere, like in gentrifying areas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the dope spots. Yeah. So. So it's not dope unless they're gentrifying it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm yeah. not saying that. <laughs> I'm definitely not saying no, that. No, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. no, We're in a real like, transformative, transformative time anyway. Exactly, yeah. Like, everything we live in through is crazy. Like, in the history books, like, our time, we elected Obama and Trump. Yeah. Like, if you can <laughs> and think it's so of, like, rapidly happening, too. That's yeah, the thing. everything's changing. The world's changing. Yeah. And we're, like, you're either a part of it or you're not. Exactly. That's how I see it right now. Yeah. Feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy though. Yeah, it's crazy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why you laughing? You Cause, laughing. bro, you be killing me, dog. You I just... really don't say nothing. I wasn't even saying nothing. I know. That's the thing about it. Bro. It's you. You speak without speaking. Oh word. You know what I'm saying? Communication. Communication. It's only what ten percent, fifteen percent of communication is the words. You yeah. feel me? The rest. Five is... percent. There you go. Even less. You know what I'm saying? The rest is body language and tone and. I'm not saying shit. You know what I'm also saying? Also, my lack of. Lack of is also a form of communication. Right. Yeah. I studied this shit. You know what I'm saying? You studied what? Communication. Oh, really? Nah. I mean, I, I took a <laughs> class or two, but it wasn't the focus of my education. I yeah. could vouch for you, though. That's What's that? my major, so you're right. You're a communications major? Yeah. Where, me too. Oh, really? Yeah. Currently, or you were no. communications major. Uh, like I, you I got me my too. Degree. I, are you in there right now? Yeah. Oh, Where'd you go to school? Uh, Caldwell University, it's in Jersey. Oh, word. I went to AU for like a, a little bit. I was doing like community development work and shit. American in DC? Yeah. Okay. But most of the time at Caldwell. And you finished? Yeah. Oh, I mean. I got a degree. You shit. finished, man. Do whatever you want, <laughs> nah. That's. As yeah, far as like the whole, I'm what I'm doing. yeah, I mean I'm not for you. I'm talking about even from the like the Habesha parent yeah. perspective. It's like yeah, I got my degree. Yeah, yeah. Ch- check the box. Let's, let's move on to doing life. You feel me? Yeah, yeah I mean I did that shit for like my mom's and shit. Yeah, wait, I feel you. It's like okay, I ain't using this shit for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. It's all life experience though. So. Yeah, I, I honestly believe that at least undergrad that experience what you major in or what you even all the classes you take are um, are a minute part of like the actual thing it's yeah. like learning to deal with people like growing networking with people your own age your own in your own time you yeah, just there. like relationships right yeah, yeah honestly relationships with people and your relationship with yourself like that's 
You think you grew you grew a lot in college? Oh yeah. Personally, yeah, that's because I I mean, just as an individual I had all that was going on with that and then all that was going on outside of school, so there's just a lot that was going on there, but without without going to college or even specifically where I went, I wouldn't be here right now. For sure. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, like Start. degree aside, like the networking and even how I got to LA is like all because of what I developed at UNT. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, man. Shouts to college for some people. For some people, it's not for everybody. Yeah, it ain't for everyone. You think college for everybody? I don't think. Okay, <clears throat> this may come out fucked up, but no, nah, college is not for everybody. To the extent that not everybody is going to. Do you think it's even like an effective model for education? Like, do you think it's even like? the most effective way to be teaching people i think the way america has it set up is is not right no yeah. mm-hmm. but there's other models that are way more effective yeah i'm, I'm like, saying and like they you, all they all are college or university or like trade school type shit or like, trade school for some people but i'm talking about like for example in canada i have family in montreal and one of the things my cousin told me is like basically what we consider our junior and senior year in high school they're already like in college per se. Yeah, then it's university. Then it's university, yes. And that's only for a couple years. And then boom, like they got that undergrad out the way. Now it's like, that's specialized. If you're going to really go to school, then you're a master of something or a doctor or something. And then that's a different ballgame. So they just expedite the master's program. They expedite the undergrad program, I would say. Right. Well, the whole process. The whole process. Yeah, the whole system. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, man. That, I feel like that makes more sense. And it's not based off money. I think that's the other factor that right. we got all wrong. Right. It's like you can go to school everywhere else, and it's like if you decide to go to school and you make the grades, you make the cut, then you're not coming out of this with a burden on your back. It's like you know, right. you're going to school. <laughs> yeah, nigga. You feel me? That is where I feel like we really mess up. It's like a, it's almost like another way of keeping those who don't have down. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. systematic. Yeah. You said it's not intentional? No, I'm saying it is intentional. Oh, yeah, yeah it's yeah, totally yeah. intentional. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, college is great um, for creating productive members of society or just, I don't know, a functioning society. You need, college develops you in that mindset to continue whatever this world is on. Like, like you go to school, you learn how to follow rules, you learn how to be obedient, you learn how to, like, I don't know you know you learn how to be on time how to in college think, yeah in college like you just learn these certain things that teach you how to continue to work in the corporate world in america like so that's so that's to be a productive cool. corporate member of pretty much society. i mean that's the end goal anyways yeah, yeah. For, that's the end goal for whom yeah for, for whom? i mean i feel like to continue with america's like just society in general like just american the american way of life like so, so be cut to function within the corporate realm effectively pretty much yeah that, that's what school prepares you for it's yeah. not necessarily to be a productive thinker or what about like an entrepreneur though? like is that how does that just still apply or do you think hey do you think college is good for like someone who's looking to yeah like get you an entrepreneur yeah job. just to be an entrepreneur in general I mean, it's whatever. I guess it I depends what they're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. What? I think like that's the thing. It depends on what sort of business you're developing. But in reality, just peeling back to what you were saying, I feel like the reason why you even think that is part of, it's the whole thing is systematic, like even at its root, right? So right. the whole point the whole point of university, right, just to, historically was the idea of the king or the or the queen was like, Hey, We've got these sectors that we need to develop for our country or kingdom to continue to prosper. Let's build these schools that teach for these sectors. Right. That's the origin of university. It's like you go through public schooling or whatever, and then it's like specialized, specialized, specialized. But then it just became like this whole thing. You know, it's just like, oh, you need, it became more of a status thing. You have your bachelor's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You go to to a job interview, they may not even ask you what you have your bachelor's in. It's just yeah. like, do you have your bachelor's? It's like, 
did you go through that process? You yeah. know what I'm saying? That we designed for you to go through. That we designed for you to go through. That you have to pay a lot of money for. Yeah, yeah. and that we can <laughs> point back to as a way that has taught you how to function. Behave. Yeah, how yeah, to behave. behave. Yeah, how exactly. to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually hate that. Yeah. I hate that. But at the same time, I. this is why I say it may rub people the wrong way, but 80-20 is generous, more like 90-10, 95-5 of the ratio of people who are actually looking to bring something to the world out of here, you know what I'm saying, or wherever you think it's coming from, and uh, bring it to the world as a creation versus people who are looking to just like be or survive or maintain or provide but not necessarily function. function, right? But not necessarily to survive. Really. Survive is really where I'm at. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's how I feel. The majority, the majority of why people go to work, is not because they actually enjoy what they do. It's because hey, I enjoy feeding my kids. Right. I it's enjoy. About security. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I so for that, I'm gonna take forty hours out of my week at least and give it to some other cause so that that person up top can be worth billions. That's that's the weird shit. It's like you're sacrificing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you it think is about a sacrifice, it, sacrifice. Yeah. And then sort of you're bro- sacrificing your soul at that point because you're just killing yourself. I mean, the way I see it is. But that doesn't apply to everyone, though. Some people. That's what I, some people enjoy yeah, it. Cool. I mean, like, <laughs> I like my job. You I like spend it. you spend forty hours of your week, like. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Put it like this. Like, you spend most of your life working, whatever your job is. Mm-hmm. Like, that's most of your life. Yeah. You still have to sleep. You work, and, yeah. and then, like, you eat, and then you die. Yeah. Well, you don't have to be like that, but that's how most people function. So when people, like, say they're just doing shit because, like, oh, the money's good, but I'm not happy, or, oh, that's just like what I have to do. Yeah, this is just how it's supposed to be. Like, that's not true. It's actually bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, it's like, even for me as an artist, I'm not going to be fucking spending the majority of my life being unhappy just so I could go on vacation for fucking five days. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm always happy. And, you know what I mean? I think we're just like conditioned to like, function in this robotic way of living because that's just how it is but that's how it is because that's how it is you know what I'm saying you that's don't how have it is to that's how it was set up to be exactly you yeah. know and like I think it's like it's important for people to kind of even have that perspective because here's the thing everyone comes to the realization but lots of people come to the realization when they're on their deathbed <laughs> and look back and they're like damn I should have done some shit that made me happy because nigga I'm Nigga, I'm about to die, and I look back, and all that, all the money or whatever didn't really mean nothing. So it's just, like, I think it's super important to, like, be open-minded and understand that, like, when you leave this earth, like, we're, like our main thing is just to be creators. So it's, like, when you leave this body, like, this vessel, this vehicle, and you go to a different realm, the only thing that's going to be left here is this shit that you create. Yep. You know what I mean, and and that's what you're gonna be thinking about when you you're on your fucking deathbed. So it's like being real deliberate about that and understanding that and understanding we don't have much time while we're here. Mm-hmm. So and you could go tomorrow. You go right now. That's what I'm about to say. And that clock is yeah. So it's like you don't know when it ends. You know, I think it's just super super important. And if anything I say out of this podcast. Besides, like, the small talk thing, I just think it's really important for people to, like, understand that your time is, like, your most valuable currency and that um, you can't get it back. Mm-hmm. And certain things that seem like routine or that's how it's supposed to be, they incrementally add up and they comprise the majority of your life. Mm-hmm. So it's about like the little things and it's like about these steps that you take and every day you wake up and you go to work and if you're unhappy, you're just taking further and further steps to a lifetime of misery. For sure. That's true. That's real. <laughs> and you could do the opposite and take those steps 
in the little things to a lifetime of like happiness and fulfillment and sometimes that just requires like a risk and like believing in yourself and you might be broke for a little bit or you might be you might not have as much money but that doesn't matter because like the money is just a form of currency but it's not the most powerful form of currency our time our happiness that's the most powerful currency and if you name me any profession whether it's an artist like me whether it's podcast stockbroker painter janitor cleaner anyone who's the best at what they do and put in that effort and build that up is still rich mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying if yeah, you're yeah. fucking if you love cleaning it doesn't mean you gotta just be a janitor for your whole life and have this certain amount of money you could be yo i fuck cleaning you could clean and figure out a way and if you're the best at it figure out a way and have your own cleaning company yep. and now you own your shit and i think having that idea of um making the shift and that's kind of why i was asking you about money and investment because i know these things yeah i was asking it to like kind of build towards kind of like what i'm saying now is that if we just make the shifts towards ownership and we make the shifts towards investing and we make these small fundamental logical shifts within ourselves we don't have to be robots and we don't have to do any of that shit we can do what we love we can still be rich and we can still own shit Mm -hmm. but we just gotta be aware of how things work on a systematic level we gotta be passionate we gotta believe in ourselves and if we do that and we encourage each other to do that and we work together and we support one another we all rich and when we're all rich that's when we could pool our money together pool our funds together pool our influence together and make societal cultural change within this capitalistic society because you can bitch about it or you can do it really well Mm -hmm. and then help the people that need to be helped yeah because the game's not going nowhere yeah and that's and that's my that's my thoughts yeah word (laughs) nah very well said so i'll be silent most of the time nah collecting oh i see that shit that's why you be silent you be putting it together it's just good. Yeah. It's a yeah. message to the man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So you get, you get a lot of questions and you get a lot of jokes, but it's all on the path to something. To a stream a of little consciousness. Bit of a, a stream of consciousness and something that I hope, uh, not that I hope, that I believe is beneficial and that could help someone that's listening. Word. I feel like anyone watching this, if someone watched this whole shit, I feel like they got a lot of information. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> There's two things, or one thing you said twice, though, and I think it's actually the biggest thing that gets some people away, is belief in self. Right. Um, you come off to someone who wouldn't know you, and let's just say they just listen to your music, very confident, right? Where where does the belief of self stem from for your heart? Like, how would you say to a, to a person who's like not um, in that same space or doesn't have that belief of self? What would you say to them? So, there's like behavioral studies and scientific, like all that, these types of studies that they study where passion comes from. And passion just comes from reinforcement. Mm-hmm. You do something People tell you you're good at it. You keep doing it, you become better at it. Keep doing it, doing it, doing it. You become better. You refine your shit. Dopamine gets released when you get positive reinforcement from something that you're good at. So essentially, passion is just a drug. Mm -hmm. We're addicted. Like we just we as humans function on our addiction. Some are good, some are healthy, and some are bad. The biggest thing that gets in that's gotten in my way and most artists is that we're uh super perfectionist and we're scared 
and we want things to be perfect. But us, and we're perfect, as in we're a perfect version of ourselves. But that doesn't mean we're flawless. Mm-hmm. And it's important to understand that sometimes overthinking things um, is is what will prevent you from doing anything so I think what it is it's like um, it's not that I am extremely confident but the confidence develops from reinforcement and that reinforcement comes from having the courage to not only create something but put it out and let the world see it and when the world sees it you'll be surprised at whose lives you could change Mm. who you could have impacted and I think that's the biggest thing. You make the best product you can make. You make the best art you can make. And then you present it. Um, art is never finished, it's just presented. Mm. But that's kind of like everything, right? Mm. It's just like, because we're, by design, as creatures, we're growing. Like, look at your fingernails. Like, yeah. that's the biggest thing, because you might not see the other growth, but you see your finger. So we grow. Like, that's just part of us. Mm. So, if our bodies are growing and we're getting new information every day, so our minds are growing, our art's going to grow too, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's like, but it's important not to... Holding on to art too long is kind of just like holding on to, like, a day that passed. Like, you can't mm-hmm. hold on to yesterday. You can't hold on. You got to make what you make you present it and although that one piece of art could grow it's better to put it out because then you're going to free up space to make more art Mm -hmm. and become better so I'd say like the best thing I would say to any artist any creative anybody is create what you create I believe in a, a collective consciousness I believe we're just vessels for ideas and if you don't put your shit out, someone else is going to put that shit out. And you're going to be tight. <laughs> and it's almost like when you're a kid in the classroom, and I'm sure it's happened to everyone, the teacher asks a question, and you're scared to answer the question, and someone else answers the question, and the teacher's like, good job, and you actually knew the answer, and you would have articulated it better. You had a better answer. And that motherfucker got a good job. Mm-hmm. A great job. And like, bitch, I would have had an amazing job then. <laughs> but I just didn't I just didn't fucking believe in myself yeah, yeah. and I was scared. I was scared to put it out. I was scared to release it. You know what I'm saying? But if you have the courage to just, you know, put things out and know you're gonna get better, you know what I'm saying? Because you're getting feedback, you're getting energy. And and like I said, these ideas aren't ours. They're like the universe and the idea will come out one way or another because it's what the we're all just part of one big organism without getting too like metaphysical but you go there if you want yeah but you know what I mean so yeah. it's like at the end of the day it's like and that's probably happened to mad people that had this idea and they're like I'm not sure and then they see someone else do it and pop off from it and you feel like a dummy but <laughs> it's dummy. Be- because it's like the universe might give it to you and but like, all right, it's time for you to let this shit out, my nigga. And then if you're saying, oh, I'm not sure, like, all right, well, peace. Because the universe has options. <laughs> it's like you going up to someone you're trying to talk to, whether like you're talking to a girl, you're talking to a guy or whatever, and you know, like, you say you know you're the most attractive person in the world, and you can actually have anyone you want. Mm-hmm. But you're like, hey, I like you. You want to come fuck with me? And they say... Uh, I'm not sure because you know you the shit. You be like, all right, peace. I'm moving on. Yeah. Or maybe if I think you're really incredible, I'll let you think about it for a day. Yeah. But if you're not trying to make plans, then peace. And the universe is the most powerful, the most attractive. Imagine that's like the person who can get anything they want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most beautiful. Most so, and they giving when they give when it gives you an idea, it's like, hey, do you want to fuck with me on this? Mm-hmm. And if you say no. The universe ain't patient. It's not gonna be patient for you, cause it wants what it wants, or it's not doesn't want what it wants. It's it's gonna get what yeah. it's gonna get, and it's, it's gonna way. have its purpose. So also just trusting that, and I think when you, once you detach your ego from it a little bit and understand like, oh, like this is like, this is a gift. 
I'm saying that I'm supposed to put out, whether it's an idea or a creative thing, but understand that that's a gift and you got to just release it. You know what I'm saying? And, and the fear, all that type of shit, it don't go away. You know what I'm saying? I, I still get nervous. I still get, I still overthink shit. I still, but I just put the shit out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, but I, so I think finding the balance between making the dopest shit you can, but not overthinking it and then putting it out. If you focus on having like the dopest product, then it's going to sell itself. So like in your inception, your intention should be to make something amazing. But then after like move the fuck on, you know, and, like make more shit and use those tools that you learn, and those lessons that you learn. You know what I'm saying? So I mean that's my my thing. So and and through that you will build confidence to like answer your question. I think because like we all have like the most confident people you see like they're confident in one element or they they may be confident in certain elements or components in their life. And when you see them appearing confident, it's because they know they are good at whatever it is. So they can confidently say it. Mm -hmm. Just like how you can confidently talk about money. Yeah. Because you have the information. Yeah. But if, so if someone came up to you right now and was like, yo, what's your thoughts on this? And you're talking about money or whatever. They're like, oh, it's a confident dude. If someone asked you about some shit you had no idea about, and you'd be like, oh, well, I'm not sure. They might be like, oh, that nigga ain't confident. Yeah, 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 it's contextual. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just like d through practice and through doing things, you will build up the confidence. You know what I'm saying? Because someone who's super confident in one area, they're still super insecure, probably in another area. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I identify. So it's just like what people are presenting to you. So I still have insecurities. Like you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not insecure in my raps because. The most respected, but <laughs> you know, I'm number one. But yeah, that's because one. that's because you know I work I work hard at it, and because uh, you give the most respect. Give the most respect. Word. Nah, but real talk. That's a uh, a lot of what you said. I feel like is um, is what people struggle with. Yeah. Many people who are just trying to get into that realm of creativity because people have it. I feel like way more yeah, people. Yeah have the creativity within them than people who utilize it or express it or do anything you know what i'm saying and a lot of it is that initial fear of um even myself i'll speak for myself right um one of the first ways i ever interacted with you actually i don't know if you remember is because my cousin uh caleb or caleb mm -hmm. um, oh yeah yeah so way back when um he actually brought me into music you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and uh for myself, it's like there is a, and like I understand music to the extent that I still work in the music business, but actually being the person on the microphone, very few people have recordings of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and he's and he's one of them. You know, yeah. but it's because like oh, there's that apprehension. Like yeah. I don't know if I want to put this out. Yeah. I don't know if I want the people to hear right. this. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if I maybe had dropped it, you people would be like, oh, this is dope, and then you'd be like, oh, word. Let me do more. Let me do more. Exactly. And then it becomes cyclical. It's like a snowball that turns yeah. into an avalanche. Because most of the time, you're not going to be that terrible. Yeah. And even if you Especially are. Especially if you're doing, like, if you're around people who are like, hey, that was dope. So, like, if you're around someone who's dope, they're probably not going to let you put out some real whack shit. Yeah. So, if they tell you this is cool, it's like, all right, bet. For sure. Yeah. So, so you drop it? You drop the mixtape. Those were like <laughs> so old, but now it's funny because we um when we were in uh, Dallas uh, doing the whole Blue Night Time thing, we had interviewed um, Nathan Zed, and we did this random like we were just freestyling in the booth at the studio, and um, I ain't gonna say who, but amongst the crew, somebody had like pooped that hoe. You know what I'm saying? It was like terrible. So then somebody was like, "Yo, uh, Caleb and Abel, AMX, both know like." I, I'm not gonna say like I, I spit, but like I have fun. You feel what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And we had some tequila in us, and those two were two of the only people on earth who I will get in the booth in the same room with. Mm. It's like fuck it. I just walked in there, and I like I didn't do nothing crazy, but it was good enough to where when I came out, niggas was like cheering and shit. Right. So I dropped it, some of it, a snippet of it on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I would get like replies for the cut that I put out. That I'm like, yo, like in my head, this is so trash. Right. You know what I'm saying? But. People fuck with it. People fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of funny. You it know what I'm saying? Help people. It can help people. It might help someone's life. You know? Yeah, man. You could have. 
you're gonna evolve. That's my thing. If you if you're persistent with something, you're naturally gonna evolve. Like you may not be Michael Jordan, but if you go out there hooping every day, you're gonna learn how to dribble better. Yeah, but Michael Jordan wasn't the most talented athletically. He wasn't like yeah, that's what I'm saying. He worked really hard. Exactly. Like LeBron James is hands down the best athlete ever in the NBA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know, and then you know you could always. Say, I'm not really a super basketball nigga. I don't really be debating about sports. But what I'm saying is, if you want to say Jordan is like better. Or even if it's the same, Jordan's not as athletic. Right. So there's something else there. Yeah, it's that tenacity. It's that. Right. It's that. Not to say LeBron don't work, but that's what they. That's what everybody knows Jordan for. It's yeah. like the work that he put in. Right. He's a possessive almost. And then Kobe kind of took that. Yeah, you just gotta be baton. You just get what you put in, bro. That's just life. You get what you put in. Or. So you've talked about confidence and how to develop that. You just got to do it. You say you need courage to develop the confidence, but how do you get the courage? I saw an Instagram post that you made about, it was like you eating fire or something. Oh, and yeah. And you were like, you're afraid of fire, so that's why you did it. And that fear, I don't know what exactly you said, but you said that courage wasn't the absence, uh, fear wasn't the absence of something, but you okay, had so courage what's, what's, to do it. What you're saying, okay, so... Um, whether it's me eating fire or like walking with lions or hanging by hooks um, or even just putting on a really good show like um, it's not people often see me and they think I'm like fearless like oh he's not he's not scared of anything and that's just not true you know what I'm saying I have the fear I'm, I have courage though and that's the difference because when you're fearless, I always say this, when you're fearless, it means you're not scared of anything. But when you have courage, it means you're scared and you still do it, mm. you know? And lots of times you see people that do stuff and you're like, how are they not scared? They're still scared, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're still fucking scared. They just know that if they endure their fear, there's glory on the other end of it. And what life is about is being able to take that risk and that's when people say no risk no reward and that's what everything even little things so you might like like somebody and you you if you're too scared to say something to them and you don't have the courage to say something to them you'll never have opportunities to like have a relationship with them but if you take the risk yeah, they might tell you to fuck off or they might not like you. You know what I'm saying? Possible. But it might also turn into something beautiful. So what it is is I think with most people, it's like analyzing what's important to you. What is fundamentally the most important thing to you? For me, being like an artist, being a real human being, uh, inspiring people, and pushing other people and pushing myself to the limits is extremely important. And it's more, and it's important enough for me to risk certain things. And that's what it is. It's all about figuring out, is it worth the risk? And that's the only thing. I can't tell you how to have courage, or whatever. All I could tell you is think about what what do you stand to gain and benefit? And if it is worth it, you won't need to be convinced to have the courage. You'll just do it. Because if your fucking family member is in a house full of fire, you're running in that bitch. Right. Or, and that's because those people are most important. That's worth it to you. Yeah. And if it's $20, you're like, that ain't worth it. Yeah. So it's figuring out what's worth it to you. Really knowing yourself, knowing what you're looking to accomplish and how important is it to you. So for some people, you know, preserving their pride or like or looking cool sometimes is is more important to them. And I could definitely relate to that because it happened with me. 
Mm. And that's probably, that's why it's like, you know, my method is like, you know, may, be the best rapper, be the best artist, be the best live performer. That's just what I like to do. So therefore, I don't really have to like do too much on the like, hey, fuck with me type shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I still take risks in other departments in order to do it, and I still take sacri- I still make sacrifices. So it's simply figuring out where you're looking to sacrifice, where you're looking to take your risks. You know what I'm saying? Some people, they'll they'll run up on people. They're like, you know what I'm saying? They do all this other shit that I wouldn't do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm just like I'm cool here. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna make my shit super tight. So we always taking risks. We're always making sacrifices. The thing is, I think lots of time we just gotta be deliberate, and that's the thing. Lots of times we're just not deliberate, and the things we do we're programmed to just exist. Yeah. And we're programmed to just wake the fuck, wake up, and go to work, watch TV, go on social media, and just wake up the next day and die, like you know what I'm saying, and have kids, and then like take care of kids, and just like this, we're just taught to just exist. And we're not taught to live. Mm. And we're not taught to be deliberate and be like, intentional. what's intentional and be like, what's the purpose of this shit? And I think the more deliberate and intentional you are, the more you can focus and, and have the courage to do things, um, have the discipline and have the tenacity and have like the stamina and the resilience to almost an obsessive delusional standpoint Mm. because that's what it is I'm literally obsessed with being the best artist in the world I'm delusional like because now it's not as delusional because I'm seeing success in it Mm. but it was I was literally like if you ask someone like you know a bunch of years ago they'd say you're delusional you know what I mean? But lots of things come off as delusional. If I told someone to hang from hooks, they'd be like, you're, no, you're not. You're delusional. <laughs> Since I'm going to eat fire, you're delusional. They say I'm a fucking, I'm a walk the lines. You're delusional. So you can't really tell me what I can and cannot do because your opinion is, in, is invalid. Because mm. my whole life, I've been doing shit that niggas told me I, I was crazy for doing it, and I did it. And then I always was respected after, and they said, wow, I was wrong. Yeah. So, you know. That's a perfect segue, actually, because what I was going to ask you is the other the other side of <clears throat> the whole thing, right? A lot of what we're talking about right now is internal, but then there's the external, right? There's perception. There's worried about how people feel about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because <clears throat> really what uh, something I've come across personally is the idea of one's confidence uh, being interpreted uh, maybe the wrong way or other people maybe because of their lack of confidence or whatever the case may be, take your confidence as something that's a negative almost. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then that, if you're strong-willed, then hey, maybe it doesn't have any effect on you. Maybe you're like, you know, the most respected here. Or... I'm the most respected for sure. Right, you feel me? Or, or but for a lot of people, I mean, I can say I was personally affected by this, is you start to move, you start to move with intention, you start to do things, right? big things and people start taking note of it but then you also get like this kickback like from people who maybe they knew you before all this or whatever the case may be it's like who like who you think you are yeah you stuck up (laughs) or whatever it's like yo like nah i'm just on something right now i'm on something right now and i don't want to give that up to be a regular a regular person or like you know be treated does that make sense like the, having that mentality, and this is what I was getting at with that ratio, the 95-5 or 80-20, yeah, whatever numbers you want to use, the fine, finite small group of people who can truly work in that delusion, like who will even understand it, let alone actually function in it. Right. So how do you deal with, or do you even deal with the 95% of, or the people who who you may have... That sounds a little elitist. Um, so I wouldn't say I, don't well, that's, that's, I mean it's definitely, there's definitely I just say I just I don't understand what you're saying yeah. I say I look for harmony you look what? I look for harmony oh, in my wait, life wait wait wait, wait, wait. Okay. and if something is not harmonious with me I do not allow it 
and I learn, and I'm based on logic. So typically, I like I break down, I break things down for people, and, and if they argue, I'll break it down in a way where like if they argue, they they, they feel stupid. Mm. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like but even that, that right there, can be taken by whomever you're arguing with. But it won't be an argument. Though. Or whoever you're having this conversation with, let's say, or whomever you've presented this simple thing that's like, hey, if you argue with this, you're st- people. I wouldn't say that though. You may not say it. Energy. I would ask. No, okay. I'm telling you, I wouldn't. I would ask them questions, mm-hmm. and they would they will tell me that they're being ridiculous. Mm. Word. Like, I mean, you could. I mean. It may be better you, you could role play and you can give me a scenario and I'll tell you how I would deal with it. Like, you know, but you'd feel very, very foolish. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, because I get to the fundamental root of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And then when I get to that, you will realize, oh, I'm bugging. You know what I mean? But do people take that, oh, I'm bugging positively? That's what I'm getting at. Is it a oh thank they you have you've enlightened they, me? No, or is I'm, it not, a, I'm oh, not here to enlighten people. I'm I'm here for harmony and I'm having a conversation. And if you feel a type of way, that's something you got to work on yourself. That's what's getting at right there. And yet people, the thing is, people search for their happiness and all these things from these external sources. That's why I was actually gonna nix it in the beginning even when he said it because I don't even function from that. Mm. I make it effort to not function from external things like you know what I'm saying because we function from external because we look out and there's infinite amounts of external stimuli energy all that stuff but infinity by logic and design and definition Mm -hmm. if it's infinity external it's also infinity internal Mm -hmm. inwards so you have all that energy, all the things you're looking for out there, you have that in you. And if you grounded more in that, you're grounded in your happiness on the inside. And you're grounded in your confidence and your in your motivation. Being grounded, you know what I'm saying? If you're not grounded, yeah, of course you can be swaying and, and shaking and all these things. But it's like knowing who the fuck you are. Like what do you stand for? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why when people say stuff to me, certain things, I look at them. Like, I don't say, you know, I won't even say anything. I'll just be quiet and I'll just look at them. Like, yeah. That's probably why you sound funny because sometimes I'll just, because sometimes you don't have to say things. Yeah, like, for you sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, and they, yeah, you know, I'd say like maybe like the most, the, the most common thing is like, so, what would you say is the most common scenario for people not like feeling a type of way? About? You actually hit it on the head though when when you were talking about at the end of the day, it's, to summarize, like fuck what people think because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like, also you you shouldn't expect. Um, it shouldn't be part of the calculation is really what it sounds like. Yeah, because, like, the way people even treat you is more so a reflection of them than you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the and the and and your world and your reality is based on you. Mm-hmm. So you only, things affect you if you allow them to affect you. You know what I'm saying? That's just like, if someone's toxic, I just want to have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And if I do, I recognize that's just work that I got to do on myself. Mm. And if I just want to, I, I mean, if I feel like fucking someone up that day, it's like, yeah, maybe I'll punch you in your face, maybe I'll fuck you up. But that's because of me. That's some yeah. work I got to work on myself yeah. for. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but even me feeling I have to do that typically will probably mean that I'm attracting that energy. You know what I mean? Because you don't really have to engage. You know what I'm saying? Because like, mm. if I feel like I'm in an environment, where um, if someone doesn't respect me, if someone goes out of their way to re- to disrespect me, well, I'm the most respected. But anyways, if someone ever even did, that means they don't respect themselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so now you're engaging with someone who doesn't respect themselves and someone who's bored. 
And that's the worst. When you fuck with someone who's bored, that's don't ever be for the bored nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> the, you have now given them purpose. Yeah. And they have the time and the energy yeah. to hurt, sabotage, and do all this shit. And the second you engage, you've now added a fuel to the fire. And you've yeah. now enabled them. And you've now given them purpose. And the same, I'm obsessed with success and making the dopest art in the world. These niggas gonna take that same energy, the same energy I have towards this, they obsessed towards fucking my shit up. The second, and guess why? You know why? It's because there's reinforcement added. The same way you've been, we've all been reinforced to do what we do because we've gotten validation that what we do is like dope or whatever. Mm -hmm. We've seen a result stem we've done something because we're just an experiment we experiment we've done something and seen a result from it yeah this nigga says fuck you if you don't respond no result move on Word. nigga says fuck you you say fuck you back you bitch ass nigga oh shit <laughs> so he didn't even only just give me the same effort I gave him he gave me more he gave me fuck you bitch ass nigga extra shit whoa this is power. I've just controlled this person. Mm-hmm. Now, hit you with some more shit. And then hit you. And, and But here's the thing. Once they've shown that fundamentally they can have an effect on you, even if you ignore that, you've already given them evidence that you they can impact you. Yep. Affirmation's there. So they already have the knowledge knowing that whether you now ignore or not, you're being impacted and if you ever notice you ever notice like famous or successful people everyone always got it's usually on one side of the spectrum everyone's always like yo that person was mad cool everyone's like that person was a dick mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah because yeah. people just want to have some type of attachment yeah. strong attachment to these people that are successful yeah, yeah, I met true. that dude he was a dick oh this person was mad cool they they dab me they smoked me up like, we best friends. We either best friends or we worst enemies because they're attaching their life and their value to this something that they view as successful. Yeah. And they want to have a story to tell other people to make them feel good Word. about their interaction. Yeah. I've seen a couple people like that. Right. Probably you just got a glance from them and you're like, oh, we besties. Right. Or <laughs> fuck that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or that. Yeah. 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 Like, but, yeah. and they usually, when I, if I meet celebrities, I'll be like, oh, yeah. It's cool, like, you know, it's just a human, like, they just, yeah. I mean, they're doing their thing, like, and, and I think that's even when people meet artists, they gotta understand, it's just like, you know, like, people are just human, you know, like, Word. like, you know, that's all it is, you know, and we're like, there's so many components to us, you know, like, you catch these people you think are great on a bad day, you catch Martin Luther King on a bad day, and you don't know him, he might be like, fuck you, you piece of shit. And you be like, damn, that nigga I met with the stash, that, nigga, that pastor I met with the stash, is fuck that nigga, you piece of shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You catch someone who's like the biggest piece of shit, does awful things, you catch fucking, you might catch Hitler, and just fucked up, you might catch Hitler, and like, he might say some nice shit to you, do some nice shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, he might be in a good mood. You know, niggas be still fucked up, they might be in a good mood. He might be like, yo, that nigga with the small stash, the German nigga, he was mm-hmm. tight. <laughs> You don't know what these motherfuckers. For sure. You don't know what these motherfuckers is doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you don't know Donald Trump, you know you have no idea who he is. Nigga might just be drunk as fuck. Whatever the fuck he's doing, I mean, they got so much money. He just might be like, "Yo, here's like a hundred dollars. He just yeah. give it to you because he feeling like that." And it might really just be a flex. Yeah. To like flex his power on you. You know what I'm saying? It might buy you a drink. Oh yeah, that fucking that that fucking orange looking motherfucker. He was lit. He bought he bought everybody drinks. He's a man. Because you have that one interaction with him and you don't know these people in their entirety. I think with celebrities, it gives you a lot more insight. It still doesn't give you all insight, but it gives you more insight than the average person. Mm. Even your friends, people you might think are your best friends. You don't necessarily know who they are when they go home. Mm. You know what I'm saying? These people could be doing fucked up shit. They could be doing wild shit. And you don't know. And that's your mans, right? But you, everyone's so quick to have these opinions of celebrities and all these people. One, because they're celebrities and there's value. And they, they want an attachment to them. And two, they just have access or they feel they have access to information about them. But I think that's another thing that is important to understand is that 
the more successful you are, there's going to be people that probably don't have an issue with that. You know what I'm saying? And they're just looking for that dopamine release by engaging with you. Mm. So that's why it's important to be careful who you engage with. You know what I'm saying? And your level of engagement. Because sometimes people have this entitlement. People feel entitled to your time, entitled to a response, entitled to your friendship, entitled to these things. And oftentimes people feel like, oh, you changed because <laughs> you're successful. And it's like, yeah, sure. I mean, you grow. So growth is a change. Yeah. Now, but important question, did I become an asshole or did you just start becoming a lot nicer to me because I'm more successful? Mm. Did we start talking? Is it that I don't want to talk to you now or is it that we never talked? Yeah. Or I don't and talk to anybody with that. Or, like, is it just that we never talked and yeah. now you're looking to talk to me, coincidentally, because I'm in a better place? So, does that highlight a component of your personality that maybe I didn't know before? That you're an opportunist? Maybe. Now, with someone who's looking to, like, better themselves, want to associate with someone who's fake and an opportunist and is looking to work all of a sudden or looking to be cool and hang out all of a sudden mm. does that does that make me a dick or does that just make me observant and does that make me understand that I'm not looking I'm looking to be around people that are more genuine and I think lots of times people don't even realize they're doing fuck shit Mm. Because there's a difference between showing love. Because I have lots of homies that are, like, famous, you know what I'm saying, and successful. But if I wasn't talking to them every day, I'm not talking to them every day now. I actually talk to them less. Right. But maybe, like, when I see them, or, or like, I hear about something, I might just be like, yo, dope, I see you, much love, your inspiration, appreciate it. And that's it. Not let's chill more now. Or not, uh, we got to work on shit. If I never asked you to work on shit before, and you probably haven't become a much better musician. Maybe you have, but not that much to where, like, I go from not wanting to work at you at all to, like, all of a sudden being super keen. Mm -hmm. So then, obviously, the only thing is just that you, you're more successful. So it seems like I'm not bringing anything to the table. You know what I mean? Mm. And everything should be a mutually beneficial exchange. And understanding that <clears throat> and knowing where you stand and just being real with yourself, you know? Like, you can show love. Um, but before you, like, point the finger at someone, you know, being the type of person, it's like, what am I doing? Mm. Like, really think about it, you know? Because that happens to me all the time. People are like, yo, like, let's work. But I'm like, you know me. Like, nigga, you know, you knew me when I was sleeping on a train. You knew me when I was homeless. Yeah. Nigga, like, you know me. I was selling coke and you know me. Yeah. Like, nigga, y'all niggas know me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, the fact that you know me and there hasn't been much of a shift except for the fact that you, other people you know now know me that's an issue mm. because it seems this and the only time that that type of activity is respected is if you're being real with yourself and being real with me and be like yo or if I'm being real with someone like yo I see I know like I never asked you about this before but I see like you're like being like really successful now and I admire this shit that you've been doing this is how I'll come about but yo sure. I see like you've been like I've seen your success and I think it's amazing and I know I didn't reach out to you before and I know this and if this comes off fucking weird don't even respond to me but um, I'm just looking for help I'm looking to learn and you're obviously doing something that's working and if I could just get any help or any insight and if I could help you in any way I'll fucking sit in the session and I'll like in turn I'll do whatever sure. to make your situation easier 
and come from a humble, like a humble place. That's exactly, that was the exact you word I was going to use. And have perspective, just have perspective. Yeah. Know what the fuck, who you're talking, know your lane, like know your fucking role, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And it sounds like fucked up, but I'm saying it, that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? When, like, even with people that, like, I'm working with, I got, like, like that had have bigger followers than me. Usually what I, my rule is, it's like, the person who's more popping, it's their job to like reach and be like, yo, come fuck with me. Like, oh, you you want to work on a song with me? Like yeah. they, and if you're, cause they're bringing their value. And so that means they're showing you that they see, they recognize your value because they have a more tangible value. They have right. like X amount of followers, they have X amount of money. Mm-hmm. And that's something you could really see. Yeah. Now you might have your value. Like, you know, like, like I know I'm the dopest rapper on earth, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's also an opinion thing. And, it has to be uh, once that currency is like established and understood. Cause it's almost like you have a diamond in your hand, but like if a nigga don't know how much the diamond's worth, mm-hmm. you can't buy nothing with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So once the nigga's like, "Oh, word!" Like that, di- I realize your diamond is that is worth a lot. So come fuck with me. We about to like, we about to go cash the shit in. We both gonna eat, and then you know what I'm saying. I know you got more diamonds. So yeah. then, and then, like, look me out, and then, you know what I'm saying? And, like, yeah. we'll just do it like that. But that person who has the dollars to buy the diamond, per se, that's a that's a well-recognized and understood currency, money. It's their duty to buy it, to buy it from you, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. And if you are reaching up, then you... Then if you don't ha- if you can't use that intangible currency that is your time, then you gotta come with money or something. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. you gotta come with something that yeah. brings value. If not, then you just chill and just stay in your lane. That's what I do. I just stay in my lane. I make the dopest shit I can make. You know what I'm saying? And I look to be around people who inspire me and that I respect. Word. You know what I mean? And I think that's like something. So in a nutshell, what I would say. Is that the way I deal with people who send negative energy my way? Depending on my mood, typically I won't engage. And three, I think um, the insight I give to people who, like, you know, that I didn't have is that, like, be introspective, be self aware, like, understand the dynamics, understand, like, and have some fucking tact. And have some, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. understand, like, uh, what you're like what you're doing and people just respect the real you know if you say straight up like yo you popping off i fuck with it and like you know i would just like to like even just like be mentored by you or just be under your wing or just be around because i just fuck i I, I fuck with what's going on yeah that's cool because you come from home but if you come from a a place that's entitled Mm -hmm. and you expect that these niggas owe you something then you're going to get the opposite effect and then you're just gonna be obsessed with this negative emotion and you're gonna next thing you know you're telling all your friends oh yeah i know that person that nigga's like a fuck nigga like whatever like <laughs> like fuck that dude like every celebrity you yeah hear, you hear people saying fuck that person but like they also don't understand it's like bro like okay is it was it a business relationship okay well nigga this is business no one gives a fuck about personal shit yeah. so business is business the business gonna be business. Like, that's just kind of what it is. Yeah, yeah. Nigga? And if it's personal, what was your personal relationship? But now, the issue is, lots of times people mix these business and personal things. And then, even, then, then they mix in business, personal, and art. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's just like, yo, you should be my friend, and you should work with me. And, but, and that's gonna help my business. But I'm not giving you anything in, in return of that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So it's just like, <laughs> understand the dynamics understand the currency understand yeah. how shit navigates understand your environment understand what's worth what and know that and if you know you got the diamonds you good you straight like you know what I'm saying if you know you have the diamonds it's like you'll be alright just keep mining you know what I'm saying keep keep digging up them diamonds and keep showing them and eventually you're gonna find someone who's like oh that's tight that's mm-hmm. worth a lot oh shit and I think that's the thing even when it comes from an artist standpoint I think the best thing is like, yo, can I share like if if someone's like, yo, can I share this song with you? Yeah. Just and that's tight because you're like they're coming from like a sharing perspective. Like, yo, can I share this song with you? I just like, let me know what you think, whatever. 
And if niggas fuck with this shit, they gonna say they fuck with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if they want, if they're looking to work with you, they're gonna make that be known. Word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for sure. Like, you know, because you send it to them for some reason. Like, why? I think that's the thing about the deliberate shit. People aren't deliberate. Like, ask yourself, why the fuck you messaging this nigga at this time? Yeah. Like, really ask yourself, why am I doing this? Okay, and be real with yourself. I'm doing this because I saw my friend post this music. I'm doing this because I see this person being successful. I'm doing this because I think the music's super tight. I'm doing this because I genuinely care. But if you genuinely care, you shouldn't be expecting anything. You shouldn't have an agenda. That's my opinion. My opinion. But like, when you're successful, people aren't gonna like you. Like, there's gonna be people who dislike you. Yeah. And that's just part of it. Has that hit close to home though? <clears throat> Meaning, like, people who forget fans or, like, you, you, you forget people you don't know. I'm talking about people you do know. I'm talking about people who... Yeah, those are the niggas who don't like you the most. Yeah. Yeah, because they feel like they know you. And they want to say, ah, oh, no, that nigga ain't shit. I knew that nigga when he was sleeping on the train. Yeah, nigga. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Like, yeah. Fucking, I was broke, nigga. I was fucking... Yeah. Yeah, of course you know me, my nigga. Yeah. You know me. That's where I'm from. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I was at. Like, I rap about it. I think that's... I think you're underplaying the, the, the confidence in that, though, man. Like, because... The, I feel like confidence and vulnerability are actually, like, very close to each other. I feel like when you're, yeah. a, when you're able to be vulnerable is when you're at, like, you're almost your maximum confidence. You know what I mean? Well, because then it can't be used against you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, um... Minus the elitist percentages mm -hmm. that I always use, I I say that to more so to just express how the more yeah, it's just a it's, there's vast. a it's a vast discrepancy between basically where we want to be like theoretically as where we're people looking to be. yeah what we're looking to be or as what the human person can be versus what we end up being because of societal norms or because of this big. So potential versus probability. Yeah. I'll tell the story. I mean, y'all ain't got any clues. You could, though. But I remember me and my boy, when we were, I went to a military school. I remember this was such a crazy concept to me. Me and my boy were in the military school. And there was like 20 kids in this room. 20. Mm -hmm. It was me and my friend. And... Something happened. I think we just wanted to see somebody fight. Right. We were like kind of bored. Like, yeah, I mean, we're going to make some people fight in here. Yeah. We just look bored. Yeah. Like, we gassing. I used to instigate shit. But I got, I instigate shit, but I also been like, nigga, like, don't get, get it twisted because if you try me, I'm going to fuck you up. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I instigate shit, but if you try to instigate, like, just some, like, wild, like, young nigga shit. But I remember, but like, yo, someone in here is fighting, and we said, we said, yo, uh, if no one in here fights, we're gonna fuck everyone in here up. And it was two of us. Yeah. There's 20 niggas. Yeah. And guess what, niggas? We made niggas fight. Yeah. And I was like, it's actually funny because it's actually just two of us. Yeah. And we're like t tossing around this whole room. Like, we're like dictating what's happening in this room. And the only difference is we were just two unified people versus 20 individuals. Mm, so wow. the way every person in there is thinking is like, Oh shit! Literally in their head, they're like, "Oh damn, these two niggas gonna fuck me up," or maybe I can't fight one of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, either or these niggas gonna fuck me up, or these two niggas might just beat the shit out of me together, and that's how they think. And they're like, "Damn, I'm scared. I don't want to do that." But they just thought, "Nigga, shut your bitch up." So this twenty, we will stomp you out right now. Yeah. Then it would have been quiet. Yeah. But then it wouldn't have, because then I have more unity and I come back. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but that's odd. That's interesting, right? Yeah. How like only two people can kind of dictate 10 times or whatever times of volume. Mm -hmm. And just only, the only thing of that was just the aspect of unity, right? Yeah, for sure. And that's the reason why, like, uh, you know, Jewish people, like, hold it down, even though they're, like, a big minority when, from, when it comes to the religious standpoint, but they're unified. Literally, like, when I I'm dated a Jewish girl for a year, and literally, like, um, I think it was her that told me they ha they have videos like when they're fucking like kids basically saying like yeah you shouldn't marry a Jewish person 
You should. Yeah. Yeah. Like some like yo, like this is gang shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga. Yeah. And that's why they run and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I move like I move like that too. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, obviously I'm not gonna fuck with people who are incapable. But yeah, I fuck with like I fuck with like Abisha people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Ethiopian Eritrean people. Yeah, I don't fuck with them because it's like it's like my people, bro. Why? I'm gonna fuck with them, and if I'm gonna fuck with them more, if they're if they're Abisha. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, absolutely. Nigga. Yeah. Like, cause who else is? Who else is? And that's absolutely. what everyone else does. Koreans be fucking with Koreans. Chinese motherfuckers be fucking with Chinese people. White people obviously fuck with white people, and the subsidiaries of that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're tribal in our in our nature, mm-hmm. but that's different. Niggas ain't deliberate. Word. I'm deliberately tribal. I'm deliberately a, a royal. I'm deliberately. I deliberately move in that frame of mind. Yeah, I'm definitely unapologetically African, and I definitely fuck with. African people. I feel like and black people. Yeah. Period. I feel like that's something that we need, bro. Like I I was talking to Neb about this. It's like we should be standing unpo- unapologetically in what we are. I mean, this is this well, is That's why I'm here right now. Yeah, for you sure. Know what I'm saying? I don't even do like interviews. Yeah. This is like literally the first time I've done a cam on camera interview. But we appreciate you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I don't do that shit, so. But like, that shit. What you think that shit don't play a role? Like, ever, like, people ask me for interviews all the time. Where? So. For sure, man. Vice is that's the next thing though. It's a project coming out. Um, it has hooked, it has bad for the soul on it. Um. Yeah, that's what I'm pushing right now, and then the Simba Selassie project coming in 2019. You already on the next project before you drop the the, the, the next project. You on the yeah, next, I have, next project. I have four albums done. Oh, so it's like, but they're all fire. They're like classic albums. Yeah. Yeah, like they fire. So, but I'm not looking to like, I don't know when this is being posted, but I'm not looking to promo like a billion things, but I'm really excited about the music. I'm just here to like make the best art that I can make and work with the dopest people in every capacity. And you gonna be here, like in LA, doing most of it, or are you gonna go back to? Nah, who knows where I'll be? I just know where I'm at right now, LA right now. Yeah. So, Let me get you in the room with my man's too. Yeah, I'll be tight. I've been working with real dope producers, yeah. fire producers. Yeah. And I think that's the key. You know what I'm saying, instead of like really looking to like work with like rappers, like that's cool. But I'm looking to work with like producers. You know what I'm saying. I mean, I'm yeah. Looking to work with like dope producers. Cause I don't really like. And obviously, I would love to work with rappers, singers. I won't, I'm looking to work with anyone who's dope. Yeah. But I find, like, you know, there's always a cool synergy between, like, an artist and a producer. For sure. And they're usually, like, down. So, it's like, that's kind of what I've been at now, like, just working with really dope. Like, you know. People making the sound. Yeah, just making tight shit. Yeah. I'm looking to make the best music, so. This will be out pretty soon uh watch part before the concert oh okay yeah okay. is there anything that you do want to promote or just anything you do want to get out there i mean we definitely said a lot today but said a lot of shit even um, if it's just as simple as your where people can find you anything like that yeah uh just simba lives long right now uh, on IG, basically it's all IG. Simba with two eyes though, no? Simba two eyes both times. Um, always use two eyes. Um, so yeah, Simba is long, aka Simba Selassie, aka Cocaine Bimbi, aka Billionaire Bimbi. Yeah. A lot of aliases. Word. <laughs> but yeah, I mean you know, just um thankful, thankful to you guys for Should having me. Yeah, thanks it's for like having me. Uh, thanks for the uh, both of you guys is like you know thoughts. Um, Thank I you. I would like I would like to get more out of you though. But we could keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
You were silent. You were like in the cut. I know, right? Yeah. That's the thing. We working you on have that, a lot man. To say. Yeah, I know. We working on that. We working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's important. I think like you have a lot of dope shit to say in your perspective. I appreciate unique that. in comparison to ours, and it's uh, important. I mean, for sure. But I mean, to say. huh? That's what makes the discussion interesting. We all got something to say. Right. Unique perspectives. Yeah, and I'll definitely like you know stay tuned to like you know the future podcast and stuff but you know thanks for sure for, man. for having me you don't usually do this so we appreciate you you feel me you know, it's all good <laughs> it's good i learned i learned from this shit you learned um yeah i learned a lot word man <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you bro yeah i think i think yeah, no, i think people who listen probably fuck with it we'll definitely fuck with it because we're the most respected and we're number one <laughs> number one Amen to that, bro.